and gentlemen, welcome back to the Fashion Your Passion podcast. This week, I'm really, really excited for this episode because uh, the topic we're talking about this week is mindset and really just like how to achieve the dreams you have for yourself and for your life. I am joined by Dr. Stephanie, who I was on her podcast recently, and so uh, I, we decided to do a pod swap. So now she is here as a guest. So Stephanie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I am excited to be here. Yay. Can you just give my listeners a little bit more about who you are, what you do, and talk a little bit about the journey to get to this point? Okay. So I'm going to do the journey in a nutshell because it's taken a while to get here. (laughs) (laughs) So I am uh, a Navy wife. Uh, My husband and I are celebrating 15 years this year, which is crazy Uh to me. Uh, And we have four beautiful children. Uh, My son is 14 and my daughters are 11, six, and three. Uh, And when I'm not being mom or wife, uh, I'm a spiritual teacher. So I dive into a lot of the spiritual practices. I don't do a lot of of manifesting stuff uh, just because I feel like if you're, if you focus on that the wrong way, then you can get discouraged from manifesting anything in general. So I I leave that to the manifesting professionals. That's not my cup of tea. Um, But how did I get here? So I started my personal development journey, God, about nine years ago now. Um, My husband and I, we had lived overseas in Italy and we had just moved back stateside and he was immediately thrown in deployment cycles. And so I went from having a full-time husband to being a single mom with two kids in a place that I had not been before. Um, And so I just started to kind of spiral downward. I got really obsessed with laundry. Um, I hated my reflection. I really just became a shell of myself because my environment had shifted so drastically and I didn't cope with it well. Uh, And so the shit kind of hit the fan one night, so to say, when my son climbed into bed and I had reprimanded him for probably just being a boy. And he climbed into bed and said, nobody loves me, I should just disappear. And he said the words that I felt, but I thought I was doing a stellar job of being the happy mom and that no one could see through that. But the truth was my energy was impacting my children. And so I knew I needed to change. Um, And I started really small at that time because I was totally overwhelmed with life. I was working on my PhD program. I was teaching online classes. I was trying to grow an MLM business. My husband was gone. So I was being a single mom of all of these things. And so I started with just a gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. Super simple, but I needed something that was going to shift my perspective because I was focused on everybody else had a good life. Why did I not? And so I had to shift that. So the gratitude journal was where I started. Um, And that was before personal development was cool, (laughs) so to say. Um, There were not as many personal development resources nine, 10 years ago as there are now. Um, And so my journey has just been snowballing. Um, But to make that long story short, how did I get to my business now, The Opulent Life? Um, I finished my PhD program two weeks before baby number four was born. And everybody said to me, well, what are you going to do now that you're done with your PhD? And I thought, well, hold up people. Like, can I celebrate the fact that I'm done with this? And, and I have a newborn coming. (laughs) So how about I just have some breathing room? Um, But I knew that those questions were important because I was asking them to myself. Like, what's this next thing that I'm going to achieve? And in the middle of the night, I received a vision to start my own business. Um, Initially, it was the Overjoyed Moms brand. And then um, just about a year ago, I received the vision to start the Opulent Life, which is more of the deep spiritual work um, that I've been called to do. Yeah, I love that so much. And I just love everything that you do. It's it's so inspiring for sure. But I really want to touch on first the the part of your story where, you know, you were sort of lost juggling all these different things. Like, 
what was that really like? And like, what were the feelings that were brought up day to day and sort of how did you get through your day to day? So um, I kind of shut off all emotions to make it through day to day. Um, I, as a military wife, there was nothing I could do about my husband being gone so much. And so I thought, well, it's just easier to not express that because if I tell him that I'm upset that he's gone, then that makes his job harder. And why would I want to make his job harder? There's nothing he can do about it. And so I really started to just, I was bulldozing through my emotions. I was totally ignoring myself. I was ignoring my body. Um, I was ignoring my own reflection. I hated mirrors. I hated taking pictures of myself. Um, and I, it was just, how do I survive today? How do I make it through today and somehow find the energy to do it all again tomorrow? Uh, because there was nothing satisfying about life at that time. Um, yes, I had two beautiful children, but I was so stuck in a lack mindset that I couldn't even enjoy being with them. Yeah. Um, it was gross. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the easiest way to say it. Yeah. It was just, I mean, I was a shell of myself, shell of myself. Yeah. You mentioned the mindset piece and I want to uh, sort of dive into that because we talk a lot about mindset here on the podcast and we've seen how, you know, for many, many people, it's, it's the one thing that sort of changes their life in a way. But, you know, did you have maybe an aha moment or was it sort of a process for you to get from, you know, sort of that like that lack and like scarcity mindset of like, oh, my gosh, there's so many things going on. Like there's just nothing that brings me like, I guess, joy in a sense to the mm -hmm. idea that like you are, you know, in abundance and you have so many great things going on in your life. So like what was what was that like for you? So there was a moment, um, I remember at the time I was, I had started the gratitude journal and I said, okay, I need to start doing exercise or fitness, something for me, because that's something that I had always been, I'd always been very active, but it had gotten put on the back burner. And so I was following this woman on Facebook and she posted that if, and it was, it was a, uh, uh, generic picture or whatever it was, but it said, if it was important to you, you would find the time. Mm. Otherwise you'll find an excuse. And in the state of mind that I was in at that, when I read that, I wanted to just flip her off. I wanted to be like, screw you lady. You have no idea what's on my plate. Don't tell me that I can't find that. If it was important to me, I'd find the time because I can't find the time. But it was in that moment that I got so mad that I thought, well, let me see where my time is actually going. And because I was triggered to actually look at it, that's where the shift started because I, I saw, okay, my time is actually, I wasted a ridiculous amount of time thinking about laundry. It consumed my life because it was so easy for me to think about laundry instead of thinking about the emotions that I wasn't feeling. And so I'd be like, oh, I've got to do the laundry. And so I did laundry every single day. I was a Nazi about laundry. The kids were dressed first thing in the morning so I could wash their pajamas. And heaven forbid, I found a stray sock. Like all hell broke loose. And so when I got triggered, I thought, okay, I'm going to start with the laundry because certainly laundry should not, I shouldn't be this obsessed with laundry. Yeah. And so I remember saying to myself, laundry baskets are for dirty clothes. It is okay if the laundry piles up in those baskets. And I cringed for days watching those clothes pile up because I could have just very easily done the laundry, but I was trying to change and create more time. And holy crap, when I decided that laundry was only done on Mondays and Thursdays, and that's still true to this day as a family of six, it freed up so much mental space and energy that all of a sudden I had all of this time to do everything else that I wanted to do. Yeah, It was incredible because I was no longer focusing on that one thing that I couldn't control anyways, right? We're not all running around naked. So there's constantly laundry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but when I realized that I couldn't control that thing, 
and I gave it up, uh, this whole new world opened up for me. I, I love that. That is, for me, that's really powerful because I think in this season of my life right now, there's so many things going on and just taking a moment to like evaluate and say like, okay, what sort of like taking up space in a sense mm. is, is really powerful. And I, I, Ooh, that, that was like a golden nugget. Wow. I love that <laughs> so much. Holy moly. Um, I'm just like taken aback by it. Uh, but I think it's it's so true because you know I think in society nowadays we we tend to just like fill our time with whatever especially now because we can't do as much and like we can't go out as much it's like okay what can we fill our time with you know like speaking of laundry like oh like literally right now my laundry is all over my bed because I just like haven't felt like folding it because I've just been doing 18 other things this morning um you know but it's like we we multitask and we go 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 but it's like how much of what we're doing is actually effective and pulling us forward right yeah and what is like the motivating piece for you to say you know what like I'm not gonna do this thing because it's not pulling me forward or it can wait until tomorrow um and like, how do you sort of, I mean, I know you sort of was like, it, at first it was like really, really hard for you. Um, but what would you say to the person who's like, I don't know if I can even do that. So the person that says, I don't know if I can do that for me, I was in a space where I didn't know if I could change, but knowing what, how my son felt, my kids became my reason. Mm-hmm. Um, And I can use them as an excuse all day long. People do that. I watch them do that. They're like, oh, I can't do that because I have kids. Okay, I'm going to call your bullshit on this because you can do it and you should do it because you have kids. You have this beautiful little thing that is soaking up everything that you do. And so why wouldn't you want to show them what's available to them? Why wouldn't you want to show them what they could achieve, right? My kids got to be part of my PhD graduation. We rented a bouncy house. We had this huge party and all they could think about was, oh my God, mom's celebrating something, yeah. right? They were so excited about it. And then I, I took up horseback riding lessons when I was done with that. And now we all go to the barn together and we all hang out with the horses together. And so they've become my okay, I need to get it done for my, for them. Yes, there are lots of things that I do for myself, (laughs) but I do it to show them what's possible, right? Um, I never want my girls to grow up and think that they can't achieve something strictly because they're women. Yeah. And so how can I continue to show up or even more than that, how can I show up in a space where my son respects a woman and doesn't just think that she's there to do the laundry and and make dinner. Um, And so that's a lot of my driving force. That's a lot of the conversations I have with my kids is, okay, how did you feel about this? Did you think about it? What can you do differently? Mm -hmm. And so they are, I mean, it sounds kind of cheesy, but they are. They're the, <laughs> they're yeah. the reason that I keep plugging away. Um, they're also the reason that I continue to, quote unquote, date my husband. Mm-hmm. Um, because at some point, my kids will be gone. And I'll have to carry on a conversation with my husband. Right. And if I can't do that, well, shoot, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah. No, and I always say, like, you know, so many people say, like, oh, find your why, da, 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 whatever. And it's like, sometimes it's a who. You know, and sometimes it's yeah. like, like, you know, people say also like, you know, don't do things for other people, but sometimes you are. And sometimes, you know, they, they become your driving force because that's just what is in your heart. You know, that's what is sort of, you know, around you and that surrounds you and that you want to, you know, do better for. And so that, it, it you know, it, it, some people will say it's cheesy, but for me, I think it's beautiful. You know, I think it's- Thank you it gives, it gives purpose to the things you're doing. And I, I'm curious to know, 
you know, when you first, when, you know, cause usually when people get PhDs, it's like, oh, they're going to go work in like, you know, this, like, you know, this corporate job, this nine to five or whatever it is. Uh, but you went off and created your own business. So what was that like? And how, you know, from that, from those visions that you had, how did you say, okay, this is the thing I'm going to do. I don't really care what anyone else thinks. I'm just going to go for it. I love that. So yeah, so I usually take the road less traveled. Um, it's been kind of my whole MO <laughs> from the start. Um, but I did the PhD and, and when I decided to do the PhD, it was in a part of my life where I just wanted to prove somebody wrong, right? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say, I can do this thing as the youngest of four between my parents. I was constantly trying to outdo my older siblings. And so I have two master's degrees and a PhD. And I believed those were going to just give me the accolades that I wanted. I thought it would give me the attention that I wanted. Um, but going through the process of becoming a doctor changes you. There is no part of writing a dissertation where somebody's knocking on my door asking me if I'm doing my work. There's my professor's not there. He's not checking in with me saying, hey, where are you in this project? Da, da, da. It is solely on your own. Mm -hmm. And so I was set up for entrepreneurship just through that journey because growing your own business, there's nobody standing over you saying, hey, did you post on social media today? Hey, did you have a sales conversation? That's not a thing. But what I realized and why I didn't go into the educational world as most PhDs do is I hate nine to five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. um, I have honestly never worked a nine to five in its traditional sense. Um, even when I was teaching, uh, when I was working on my first master's degree, I was teaching at a, um, a smaller college and I was still teaching. I was only teaching three and a half days a week. Mm -hmm. I still had a three day weekend. And yeah. so the idea of working Monday through Friday is exhausting to me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There was, there was no desire for that. And so as I was working through my PhD, I thought, oh, well, I could be a dean of this school, or I could be a professor for that school. And then as I got into it, I realized that that job description didn't fit my dream. Yeah. Not to mention the amount of effort that I would have to put in for the paycheck. And so when the business idea came to me, I was so excited. Yeah. I was relieved that I was going to have another option, basically, because at that time, teaching was my only option. Yeah. But now I teach differently. Yeah. I love that because I think for me, I definitely resonate, resonate, resonate with it. Holy moly. Uh, a lot because um, you know, for pretty much all of my life, uh, I wanted to be a teacher because everyone told me that that's what I should do. And I was good at it and all that stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, going into college, I was like, you know what, don't really feel like doing that. Don't really feel mm. like working every single day. Uh, and, you know, I sort of found entrepreneurship as like a way for me to teach, but very, very differently. Yes. Uh, and so, it's, it's been a wild ride, but it's something that I would never, ever like change for, you know, anything else. I would never give it up for anything because it just allows me to do the things that I've always wanted to do. You know, mm -hmm. like when we were able to travel, to travel everywhere and, you know, just go out and explore and, and live my life and, you know, doing anything else any other profession for me personally it would not I would not be able to do the things that I yeah. want to do and it's crazy to think that you know I'm sort of going after my wildest dreams and but it's like at the same time it's like I just sort of started things and I didn't even know where they were gonna go and somehow they just ended up to what it is today um and I want to know from you like what is your best advice for someone who 
you know, may not be like you and I and didn't go after it, like, you know, has an idea, but like didn't really go after it, didn't pursue it yet. Um, because they're just, they're stuck in that idea of like, what are other people going to think? Am I going to fail? Am I, you know, is it just safer to stay into this nine to five or safer to, you know, get this degree and go off into the educational space and just do that? So I love this. So this has been coming up a lot for me lately. And I like to tell people to just kind of pull the thread, right? Like we always notice that we have, you know, we'll, you'll have a piece of clothing and there's that thread, right? And so you start to pull it and you're like, oh shoot, I shouldn't have pulled it, right? <laughs> But sometimes you're like, okay, well, where's this going? Mm -hmm. And so I like to tell people to pull the thread and follow the joy. Just pull the thread and see where this will take you, but follow the joy of it. Because the second it stops being fun, you're not going to want to do it anyways. Mm -hmm. And so how can you start to follow the joy? What brings you joy? How can you start to incorporate more joy into your life? And sometimes that is the most uncomfortable thing for us to do is to invite more fun and more joy into our lives because we have to be serious. We are, you know, we're women, we're business owners. You can't just goof off. Yeah. Okay, wrong, right? Like the yeah. more fun you have, the more magnetic you become and the more you attract people. Mm -hmm. And so when you're showing up in this space of fun and joy, people want that, yeah. right? People don't want to have to define fun for themselves because it should just be fun, right? Look at kids, right? My kids are my greatest teachers. My kids can have fun with a toilet paper roll. Yeah. Okay, it becomes a telescope, it becomes this something like a flower pot, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Because they're following the joy. Mm -hmm. They're not stressed out about life. They're kids. And so how can we remove the stress and just follow the joy? How can you just be curious yeah. about this thing, right? Don't put the pressure on it. Don't stress out about it. Don't create the fear. But if you show up and you're curious yeah. and you say, all right, Maybe I just follow this road for a little bit and see what happens. Mm -hmm. If that's the road you're supposed to take, you're going to continue to follow the joy and it's going to be more and more fun. Yeah. And it's going to happen beautifully for you. It's when you stress out and you put pressure on it and you make it into something and it loses the joy that it's, it, you just don't want to show up anymore. Yeah. I think that I'm sort of experiencing that a little bit right now. Cause like for the business stuff, like there's a bunch of like, you know, sort of admin things that I'm sort of working through right now um and it's like I just don't feel like doing them you know yes. it's like I just I was like this is supposed to be fun like what's going on you know but it's like if I just get through these things like then I can have fun again you know but it's it's so true it's like it's if it's and it goes back to the idea of like that mental clutter you know that mental like mm. achieving mental clarity of like the things that will move you forward to to joy to happiness to success whatever that looks like for you um you know correlate with bringing in joy bringing in the things that are fun because it opens up a new world for you which is the reason why i emphasize passion so much yeah. is because it's not about a job it's not about you know your your next 30 years of your life it's about what brings you joy right now? What is fun for you? And, and my biggest thing is like, if you don't know what you're passionate about, like go out and live your life and do the things, yeah. you know, like start taking, you know, I don't know, like surfing lessons or go start playing soccer again or whatever it is, because it just, it alleviates that stress, like you said, and it opens up so many doors and just like a new a new like realm I feel like you know of yeah. like oh it's a possibility totally different realm yeah because you go from stressed and overworked and underpaid to oh my god I'm actually having fun with this this is exciting right and the more fun that you have the more creative ideas that you have and quite frankly then people want to be around you right <laughs> absolutely yeah nobody wants to be around somebody who's stressed out and overwhelmed all of the time yeah um I, I know I've been there I didn't even want to be around myself <laughs> yeah. yeah no a hundred percent and I think that 
it's just it's a process for sure but once you sort of hop on that train and you say this is where I'm gonna go and this is sort of how I'm going to get to the next step it is the best process that one Mm. could go through and And that's and I like that you're you talked about the process and I just want to highlight one thing everybody's process is different Mm -hmm. everybody's process is different so you can't beat yourself up because your process is taking longer than somebody else's process because quite frankly you don't know what their entire process looked like right? Um, Even my process, my process is very different than your process, but it's just because we're two totally different people. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have a lot in common, but at the end of the day, my soul works differently than your soul. And so don't beat yourself up if your process looks different than somebody else's. It's just part of the journey. Yeah, absolutely. It is definitely uh different for everyone I know like my mentor here is like you know we have very very similar stories but you know the way she started her business wasn't necessarily the same way I did and just like like it's just you know the little things too I think that's so important to emphasize because people will look at others and be like oh I must do exactly what they've done Mm -hmm. and that way you know I can achieve what they've achieved but it's like it's not really gonna work that way because right. you're not letting, you know, your own thoughts and feelings and emotions come in. So. Yeah. Before we roll into the final question of this episode, I want you to tell everyone where they can find you on the web and on social and just all the things. Perfect. So uh, you can find me on my website, uh, www.theopulentlife.com. You can get to my podcast there. You can get to my Facebook and my Instagram there. Uh, so that's the best place to head over and find me. I'm active on both Instagram and Facebook. Um, and my podcast comes out every Wednesday. Um, so that's a great place to go. Absolutely. And those links will be down below. So you can click on those and it will bring you right to all of her pages. And for the final question of this podcast, this is the question I've asked every single guest who has ever been on. So based off of how you have fashioned your passion, what is one tip that you would give those who are dreaming? One tip that I would give to those who are dreaming is to get honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And by getting honest with yourself, that's where you're going to be able to start to work through kind of the things that are in your way. Um, A really quick, deep hack um, is to just sit down and say, what is it that I want? And when you look at the things that you want, what resistance comes up for you? Because that's the resistance that you're going to have to navigate through in order to get the life that you want. Um, And that is just, I mean, to ask anybody what it is that they want, they will immediately dim their light because they're afraid of speaking out what it is that they actually want because they don't want to be judged for it. But when you sit there in your own quiet and you ask yourself, what is it that I want? You know what's standing in your way. It's going to come through. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's really a very pivotal step that you can go through. Yes. I love that so much. And that's a great practice to do as well. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. It has been a pleasure to chat with you. And for those who are listening, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you.